Hi guys, well it comes as no surprise that AMD are taking the desktop market by storm. But there's still a lot of work to be done in the laptop division. A large portion of laptops are still based around Intel and their Coffee Lake architecture. Well today, we're going to be stepping away from Intel and we're going to be focusing on an AMD Ryzen 7 based laptop. So this here is the ASUS TUF FX 505D and it carries the quad core Ryzen 7 3750H. As well as having the AMD based processor, this laptop sports the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti for its graphics delivery, and as is now the standard for laptops, a PCI Express driven M.2 SSD. Now there are a lot of different specs of this laptop out there, but this can be picked up for around about a thousand bucks in the US, and then 1599 in Australia. Now some of the models that you'll find out there will be having that Intel CPU, some with the AMD CPU and AMD GPU, and then we've got different storage sizes, and so it isn't very easy to compare them. However, what we've got here today is an interesting piece of kit, and it should be good to see if it does offer us that good value for money. Before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their new flagship Z390 Phantom Gaming X. This new board is packed with features which set it apart from other Z390 boards. It has 802.11ax, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 6, giving you support for that new wireless standard with greater bandwidth as well as providing bi-directional MIMO support. ASRock has given Gaming X a flexible integrated I.O. shield, so you're not going to struggle to fit it into your case. The PCI Express M.2 slots have been given this huge heatsink cover, which promises to keep your SSDs nice and cool, as well as keeping that GPU heat away from your drives. And on top of those features, this is an attractive board for a new config, and is loaded with cutting edge tech to get the most out of an Intel system. For more details, check out that link in the description. Okay, well here is the TUF FX 505. Now, Zeus are quite keen in highlighting the fact that this laptop has been put through a series of demanding military class durability tests for shock, vibration, temperature, humidity, altitude, and solar radiation. However, bearing all of that in mind, we're surprised to see that they're using plastic for pretty much the entire exterior. As far as the design goes, the sandblasted finish looks great, and the styling is definitely a head turner. Now for a 15.6 inch laptop, this one here is quite large compared to other models, and that is probably due to the nature of the bulky design. The dimensions are as follows. It is 360mm wide, 262mm deep, and 26.8mm high. And then on the weight, you're looking at around about 2.3 kilos. And so bigger than the typical 15 inch unit, but it still retains that nice 2.3 kilo, making it good for travel. Now taking a look at the lid on this laptop, as we've already mentioned, this is a plastic cover, but it does look metallic. We have a sandblasted finish with some nice indentations and the ASUS logo there in the center. And that logo emits a gold color when we have power. So running down the left edge, we have the DC in for use with the charger, a gigabit LAN port, HDMI 2.0 that offers 4K at 60, a USB 2 port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and a single jack that handles headphone and microphone. And you'll be surprised to know that on the right side, all we have is some ventilation and a Kentington lock port. And so that is very disappointing to see that all we have is the ports on the left side. And that we actually don't get any USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, just USB 2 and USB 3.1 Gen 1. And so if you are using devices which are specifically there for Gen 2, you probably want to give this one a miss. And around the back, it is the same story, no ports, just ventilation for the CPU and the GPU. If we turn the laptop over, we have five rubber feet, four on the edges, and a thin strip in the center that prevents the laptop from slipping around. And there actually isn't a lot of ventilation on this panel here, just a strip in the middle and off to the side there for the M.2 SSD. We do have the serial label on the back cover, which will be important should you need to contact tech support for any assistance. And since we're on this side, now would be a good time to remove this panel and go inside for a look at the components. And so here is the layout and the design. 
We come to the CPU first of all, and so our laptop is based on AMD Ryzen 7, and it is the 3750H, which is a 4-core, 8-thread processor, which has a base frequency of 2.3 GHz, and a max boost of up to 4. And so that CPU isn't quite on par with the mainstream Intel 8750, or even the newer 9750, which are both 6-core, 12-thread, and they utilize higher clock speeds. And then taking care of the graphics, we have the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti. This gives us 6 gig of GDDR6 with a turbo boost of 1590. The 1660Ti is ideal for 1080p gaming, so it should be perfect for this caliber of laptop. Later on we'll be jumping into the latest games to test this GPU out. So both of those components, the CPU and the GPU, are cooled with a double fan thermal design with the use of triple copper heat pipes, a single heat sink for the CPU and then a double heat sink for the GPU. Now from an initial look at this compared to other units, it does leave a lot to be desired, but stay tuned because later on we'll be testing this out. Azus does state that these heat sinks and the hyper fans are optimised for this configuration, but all will be revealed later on. For the memory, we have 16 gig of Samsung DDR4, which operates at 2666. Sadly though, it is just a single stick. Would have been much more beneficial to have two 8 gig modules in here for dual channel optimization. However, there is always the option to add in another stick of memory, since there is an empty slot there under the cover. Onto storage, and this is where things might be slightly different depending on the region that you buy this laptop. In our sample, there is just one storage drive, but there is an empty space here for installing a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. And so the drive supplied in our unit is an Intel 66P series, which is a PCI Express driven M.2. That drive is 512 gig and it should be sufficient there for most of your needs. However, once you do start installing your games library, that is going to fill up pretty quickly. And so what I would advise is to grab a SATA SSD and install that as soon as you can. It's just a shame that one isn't supplied out of the box. You would expect at least a 6 cell battery inside this laptop, but instead we have a 3 cell unit. And that is fixed, although if it does need replacing you might be able to buy one and fit it yourself. Just check the warranty policy before you do such a thing. And that battery offers you around 2 hours with typical usage. If you intend on gaming, you will want to make sure that you have that charger connected up because if you just run off the battery, NVIDIA power saving mode will kick in and that is going to affect your performance significantly. For networking, along with the wired gigabit connection, we also get dual band 802.11ac along with Bluetooth 5. The module for this is actually tucked away out of sight, it's underneath the Intel SSD. Azusa using the Realtek 8822BE, which is what that CB295NF M.2 card is. Okay, so if you open up our laptop, we have a 15.6 inch display which offers us that full HD 1080p. This is an IPS panel, it's capable of 120Hz, something which we're seeing more and more of on our 2019 laptops, which is great news. We get that benefit of the buttery smooth motion. Now although the webcam is still at the top of the screen, that is 720 at 30 Azus has maintained a thin bezel which is just 6.5mm, now there's what they are calling Nano Edge. Moving to the keyboard, we have a condensed QWERTY design which sits on this elegant brushed metal panel. Now this keyboard is RGB LED backlit and that lighting works in conjunction with AuraSync. For those wanting to customise the keyboard, the Tough Aura Core software allows you to adjust the settings as you desire. And this keyboard works very well, it has that 1.8mm key travel and it claims to sustain 20 million keystrokes. And then finally below this we have the touchpad which sits slightly off centre and it blends into that brushed metal palm area. Unfortunately it doesn't have those integrated left and right clickers which may save on space but it doesn't give you quite as much control. But as it goes this touchpad seems to work well, it is both accurate and precise. Okay, well our tough gaming laptop certainly has some interesting features, but what is the performance like? Well next we're going to be testing this laptop out to see how it performs. And so first of all we're going to be checking out the boot time into Windows, and then we'll see what the read and write performance is like for that Intel SSD. And then after that it is time for the games, which we're going to be running at 1080p, and we'll go with the ultra detail preset, and we'll monitor the temperatures and reveal those at the end. All of our footage by the way is going to be captured with the Ava Media Ultra Gamer to avoid eating into our frame rates. Okay, so first of all, let's boot our laptop and see how quick we get into Windows 10 from a cold boot. You're not 
Okay, and if we just jump out of our last game, we can have a look at the temperatures. And so here we have the results for the CPU and the GPU. Okay, well that is the AMD Ryzen based Tough FX 505D. Must admit, it is a bit of a mixed bag with this one. Aesthetically, it is pleasing to the eye, it feels good. It doesn't go over the top with the RGB LED lighting. It has some great features such as your display, 120Hz, ultra thin bezel, and you know, those are the things that are always good to have. It also has the 7.1 surround. Where this laptop struggles is in some of the design choices. So functionality is all on just the left side. We have no ports to take advantage of over on the right. And then further to that, there is also just USB 2 and USB 3.1 Gen 1. So there is no Gen 2 support at all, which is pretty disappointing. ASUS also decided to use single channel memory on this unit, which is gonna fall short when you compare it to dual channel. Our unit also comes with just a single SSD. You know, granted it is PCI Express, so we get reasonably good transfer rates, it just doesn't cut it, you know, once you get your games library, your music, your, your movies installed on here, you're going to need a secondary drive pretty quick. The cooling is also mediocre, both the CPU and the GPU skyrocket when you load the system. The CPU in particular hits around 95 degrees, and so the cooling is weak, and it really does need to be improved. Performance is, as you've just seen, reasonably good. I would advise you to shift down from ultra to high detail just to get that better performance. So I'm quite on the fence with this one, but what do you guys think of this laptop? Let me know in the comments box below. And today's question for you, do you wanna see more Ryzen-based laptops? Just cast your vote in the top right corner. So if you found this video today useful, guys, please uh, show your support by hitting that like button. We'd also love it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and then give that bell notification a nudge so that you get notifications when we upload new content. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys next time.